everybody. Um, for today's meeting, I'm going to be presenting um, this preprint that is relevant to some of the work that we've been doing with our deconvolution benchmark. So this is um, the preprint is evaluating performance and application of sample-wise deconvolution methods um, in the human brain transcriptomic data. So obviously that's like super relevant to the work that Leo and I are working on, which is also a deconvolution benchmark in brain human brain transcriptomic data. Um, this is a recent preprint from Dai et al. And I think they're at the SUNY. Um, so um, yeah, so just like a brief overview of this paper, they're gonna test nine deconvolution methods um, and they're evaluated with sample match data from three different data sets. Um, they're gonna kind of up with some methods that are the best performance. So they kind of have two different types of deconvolution. So the first is estimating cell type proportions and just like the method that they come up with as the strongest performer is detangle. And the next is sample wise cell type gene expression, which actually takes the output from the cell type proportions and then attributes the different expression to different cell types. So that's kind of like an evolution of like the just estimating cell type proportions where it actually says like, this is the expression of gene X and cell type Y in your bulk sample. So it's kind of like a next level. And then they go on to perform some downstream analysis with those um, cell type gene expression values. Um, and the one that they talk about quite a bit is cell type EQTLs. Um, they also like match uh, what they call phenotype associated gene expression, which I guess we can kind of uh, say that that's similar to differentially expressed genes. Um, so they, they spend a lot of time discussing um, the performance of like the downstream analysis as well. It was kind of half and half in the paper. Um, so their first figure and kind of like the first part of the paper is like the study overview. Um, so like I said, they're gonna evaluate two different types of deconvolution methods. Purp the proportion methods is probably the one that we're more familiar with. So that's saying um, like what a percent of the bulk sample is, uh, you know, a certain cell type, that's the proportion. So they're gonna evaluate six different methods there. And then the cell type expression one is maybe one that we haven't used, but again, that's attributing the gene expression to certain cell types. Um, and again, that kind of is gonna sum up to make that like total expression in that tissue. Um, and then the data sets that they're gonna use um, are ROSMAP, CMC, and the brain organoid one. And I think the most interesting one that they have is the ROSMAP because they have paired samples that have bulk tissue single nucleus RNA-seq tissue in IHC, which is immunohistochemistry. Um, so they're able to go in and like count up the number of cells from like an image. Um, and uh, you can see in this table, uh, the different number of sample sizes, but they have a very big cell reference um, at the kind of resolution, which is eight cell types, which is a pretty similar resolution to how we've been looking at, like what we look, what we have performed deconvolution at, which is kind of at like excitatory inhibitory neurons, endothelial oligos. So it's kind of that level that we're used to. So that was like similar to our work. Um, they also have a, like this data set has a ton of donors, um, 149 donors. And so that's more donors than we're used to working with. Um, and then also there the two other, um, uh, the two other data sets they're working with CMC and organoid. Uh, for CMC, they have bulk tissue and RNA-seq, and then for the brain organoids, they only have this single cell, which I believe that they then pseudo-bulk to like create a, um, a bulk-style RNA-seq tissue. Um, yeah, so then um, just going over their flow, so that's like their data sets, and then they're going to evaluate these different methods, which we'll talk about in a second, um, and then they're going to evaluate them based on, uh, so they use the single nucleus, or the IHC when they can as the ground truth compared to the deconvolution results. And they're gonna evaluate the like the performance of that um, based on root mean squared error and Spearman correlation. Um, so calculated from this like scatter plot here. Um, and then the downstream evaluation, they're gonna use these outputs uh, for EQTL mapping and then also differential expression and kind of compare that back to what they see in bulk and single cell and see if that like aligns, which would mean that these results are making sense. Um, so here's the different methods that they evaluate. So I kind of like dug more deeply into the cell type proportion methods because those are the methods that we're more interested in. Um, so different methods that you DSA, 
um, which uses an unsupervised mixture models, o OLS, which is ordinary least squares, cyber sort, um, which is v-support vector regression, and detangle linear mixing models. Some of these use some like pretty, I guess, like different and complex types of regression. Um, and then, so these first four uh, were kind of ones new to us, music and best we've discussed a bit, we'll talk about those in a second, but these guys use pooled cell um, like references. So kind of like you can imagine like a pseudobulk, kind of like a similar expression, whereas music and best use like the single cell reference and kind of like evaluate more of like the, I guess, uh, distribution of different expressions within cell type populations. So it's kind of like a, a split here. Um, and then detangle was kind of unique in that it models in the log scale. And then I think I was reading another paper, I think it might've been DSA that was like, don't model in the log scale. So there's like a diverse set of, I guess, strategies and opinions about how to best de deconvolution within these methods. Um, and then I kind of dug into their methodology about how they found marker genes, because this is also something that's kind of relevant to us. Something that stood out to me is that the marker genes are identified on the cell level and suitable level. Um, the one versus second highest strategy was used. Expression between cell types with the highest expression and cell types with the second highest expression was calculated. Um, so that's kind of similar to a methodology we're doing, which is the mean ratio strategy. Um, but instead of the ratio between the highest and the second highest, we're, they're using the difference. So I thought that that was kind of interesting. Um, I could not, I didn't see a, a list of any of like the marker genes that they use, but I'd be curious to see how those compare. Um, and then they also evaluated between the cell, the single cell level and the pseudobulked level, and then use that set as the marker genes, which I thought was also kind of a unique strategy. They didn't have a ton of justification about why this worked or like how this worked. Um, and they also didn't like compare different sets of marker genes. They just came up with the one set. Um, cool. So with all like the methodology, um, we can dig into uh, what are their results. Um, so the first thing that they present is are, these results are presented for the cell type proportion calculations in the sample level. Or so first, they're going to present the sample level root mean square error. So this is like overall, what is the total root mean squared error for um, all of those ROSMAT samples um, at the different uh, for the different methods. Um, and they're going to evaluate them versus the IHC counts and the single cell proportion counts. Um, and I, as you can see, BISC does really well for the single cell proportions. It has the lowest root mean square error, which means it has is like the most accurate versus that as a ground truth. Um, and then conversely, detangle does pretty well on both. And then OLS has a really low error, has the lowest error for IHC. So those are kind of um, like the strongest performances overall. Um, and then they also do this for the CMC and the organized data set where they don't have the IHC data. And as you can see, like we also get pretty strong performance from detangle and BISC here. Um, so I think like one thing that we've seen from other uh, deconvolution benchmarks and other, uh, I guess, reports, and even just between the like three different data sets here, is that different methods do better on different data sets, um, which makes this like a really hard problem about like what method to choose through deconvolution. Um, I think like we're getting some conflicting answers right even here within like the same paper using the same strategies for a lot of different things. So. That's there's just always a asterisk, but their their takeaway from those is that like detangle and bisque are going to be our strongest performers. Um, so they also check out okay, so the root mean squared error um, relative to the proportion of the cells. So some of these cells are more common than others. So example, excitatory cells and inhibitory uh, neurons are going to be like the most prominent cell types in these samples, um, and then the more rare cells like. Um, microglia, parasites, endothelial cells, those are like more rare. They don't in the paper tell us what the breakdown of these cell types is anywhere, which I think would have been helpful in understanding that. They do mention it in the text. Um, so, but um, like basically we get really high, the takeaway here is that we get a higher relative error for like those lower cell types, which um, is like also something I think we've seen in other papers and in our own experience is that like those rare cell types are tricky to track down and tricky to get accuracy for. Um, 
So yeah, accuracy for deconvolution proportions in major cell types was better in minor cell types. Um, so this was like a point that they make in their text and is something that we've also seen um, in our work here. Um, yeah, so I guess like I added this to my list of which method is most accurate, um, a fa fan favorite slide. And so like here they're like, detangle is better than bisque is better than other methods. And again, pointing that point home that like different methods do better in different data sets is like, if we just look at where BISC has ended up, do, 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 it's kind of all over. So this adds to that list. Um, and then, so next they move on to using their best uh, proportion uh, results in evaluating the cell type specific expression methods, um, which are BMIND, SW, CAM, and TCA. I didn't focus as much on this because that first step cell type proportion is something that we're a little more interested in. Um, so I didn't dig into these nearly as much, but basically, ah, let's see if I can make this smaller. There we go. Um, they are going to evaluate the spearman correlations between deconvolution data and um, the average expression of the cell types used for ground truth. So in those paired samples, if you think about, uh, we have our bulk ones, we're going to evaluate the proportions, and then we're going to use these cell type specific expression ones to say, okay, this expression of gene A belong to gene Y, uh, or this percent of expression of gene A belong to gene Y. Like, that, that's the breakdown we're looking at here. And they're going to compare that back to kind of like the pseudo-bulked examples of the paired single nucleus data. And um, that's where these correlations are coming from. So higher correlations are better. Oh, wait, no. Yes, higher correlations are better. And they're going to use both the BISC and the detangle input. And I think that you can see is that it seems like the variation in these results is coming much more from the um, cell type expression uh, data sets with the different colors versus the input, which is or BISC or detangle. Um, I wish they would have maybe like shown us how different the BISC and detangle inputs were for these different ones. I think from the last one, you could see that we, sorry, we get like pretty different maybe results, um, but they seem to have pretty similar cell type expression. So that kind of, I guess, maybe suggests that we need these methodologies might smooth that a little bit. Um, they didn't discuss that too much. Uh, and then um, again, they break that down by cell type. And um, so higher is better. Um, so this is kind of more wobbly. Overall, their like uh, B mind has like the best expression. And then I thought that like a nice um, check for this was that they take the expression of our different cell types and they match them up with like known marker genes. So for existent, for instance, astrocytes has pretty strong ex predicted expression of GFAP. Um, and, you know, you might recognize some of the other uh, marker genes on this list too. So I thought this was a really nice check down here. Um, Okay, and yeah, and then again, um, back to the cell type specific one, uh, bubine performed more steadily and overall better in major cell types than minor cell types. So that problem of like those minor cell types being hard to accurately capture um, still exists in this step as well. Um, any questions on this figure? Okay, and then moving on to figure four. So this is when they're gonna start doing downstream um, downstream analyses of these outputs. So here they're gonna do EQTL analysis on those cell type specific examples. Um, so again, that is going to um, kind of like map our genes to SNPs that are close to them in, in the genotype, like in the, in the genome, and then we're going to attribute them to like differences in um, phenotypes, and then we're going to like see where we can get matches. Um, so how they do this is they use this pi one um, metric that like uh, like basically like checks for similarities. Oh wait, was it? Wait, I'm forgetting what the pi one did. Um, no inferences. Proportion of true EQTLs. Okay, yeah. So it's like um, it's looking for like it's gonna like have the number of true EQ EQTLs that it finds in these different cell types um, in in each of these samples. Um, 
So yeah, so A is like just like a little schematic of this. B, we have like the different cell types um, for mutation tests. And then I think these were um, some external studies. So I think that they're finding like, um, they're saying that we found like more, um, we were able to find more EQTLs using the decombo EQTLs than the single nucleus RNA seq. Um, and I guess like this, so why you would maybe want to use deconvo EQTLs versus single cell EQTLs is that like it overcomes some of the missing data that's in single nucleus data sets. Um, and so over here, they use this upset plot. I think that this is like the pretty key one right here is that like they're able to find like there's all these independent ones, but then with the deconvolution EQTLs, they find some like good overlaps with the bulk. Um, so uh, I think the main takeaway from this one is that like the deconvolution EQTLs were able to find like a lot of true EQTLs and they correspond with the bulk and like maybe we're finding some EQTLs that were missing in the single nucleus data set. And I want to point out that their single nucleus data set is like really big. They have a lot of donors, and they have a lot of samples, more than a lot of other data sets. So like that is a problem and that like, yeah, maybe this is like a cool way to overcome that. Um, they also go on to say that like the kind of for the same reason that we have like more EQTLs, they're able to like overcome some of the missing data and explain more of the schizophrenia GWAS heritability. Um, so yeah, so that's like the, so we're looking at this orange column versus this purple column. And for the different cell types, we're able to like, uh, we have like, we're able to explain more of the heritability. So again, like we're like solving some of that missing data that existed um, with these deconvolution methods. Um, yeah, so this deconvolution uncovers more cell type specific regulations associated with genetic risk of schizophrenia. So like this looked like a, like strong, I guess I'm not super familiar with like the heritability scores, um, but like, yeah, that seems like a, a promising result. Um, and then finally, they um, did differential expression on these cell type specific, uh, I guess, expression values. And what they were able to find is like more, um, I guess like they've, find more replication of what they're calling phenotype associated genes um, between these different cases. So in the ROS map, they're teaching, uh, I believe, what's this? I forget what the case was here. Either Maybe Alzheimer's disease. Was it Alzheimer's? Um, versus control. And you can see that like we have uh, more replication, which is these blue bars, um, than in the single nucleus. Um, and then for CMC, it's like pretty dramatically higher. Um, and then organoid, yeah, we're finding some that we totally miss in the single cell. So again, this is kind of that same point is that like these deconvolution outcomes, like I just had like more information dense than the single nucleus. Um, so I think that like that would goes on to solve like some, a, a key problem with those. Um, yeah, so just like a, a summary of that whole paper. Um, so basically they kind of like Fall that like the best their best method um, was detangle um, with the runner up being bisque um, and that is based on the ground truth of the single nucleus and the IHC data um, and their best method for cell type expression is B mind um, and that's based on single nucleus and known markers and then our downstream analysis for EQTLs and PAGs they're able to replicate better um, and better explain her heritability than bulk and then for the BAGs this better replicates finding with bolts um, and it has just more power than the single nucleus. Um, yeah. So that was kind of the overview of the paper. Um, 